Hi everybody, Brian here from Quantlabs.net. Today in this video, just doing a continuation of a previous video I just recorded uh, regarding Vulture and Linode virtual servers that you can have on those uh, networks, private ones, like a cloud. But uh, this concerns with uh, latency and Kraken uh, as well. So based upon what I wrote, without having the exact implementation that you use, okay, so I'm just basically using API from Kraken, using uh, a variety of different ways, if it's through the streaming of REST or the WebSocket, you, Python algos covering Fibonacci on how to calculate a trend line is like the one in your script with the report TA and how much more I assume. The course would give knowledge and how to do it myself correct. Yes, it would give you a start and just give you a high level introduction to the uh, TA lib uh, with Python. That's going to give you access to 300 different indicators including a bunch for candlestick. I did ask Kraken reps themselves. This is what I like about this guy. He actually follows through and actually does things that can help other people, like including myself. Plus, that's why I'm relaying this message out there in the video. Uh, ask reps themselves about a, someone could about what someone could do to have good latency with their service, and they told me the following: low latency options. For the Exchange and WebSocket, we recommend hosting your API client at AWS in California. Okay, so that's because San Francisco or um, uh, Kraken is out of San Francisco. So I guess that's where the servers are. Of course, you know AWS sucks, yes. They offer old platforms like CentOS based on uh, the kernel 2.6. The problem is that Kraken is behind Cloudflare. When you do a DNS lookup on their servers, you get a Cloudflare IP. The network's topology is usually opaque or totally opaque to the regular net. Obviously, they don't want people to uh, hack into it or do a denial of service kind of thing. You either have insider knowledge from Cloudflare or you figure it out with trial and error. And let me show you something. This is, this is pinging from Montreal. So this is what he's able to get it down to, which is pretty good. Uh, you know, around just under half, half, uh, seven milliseconds there. Um, yes. And, and using this script here, uh, and then seven packets, so on and so forth. So that's using WS, the web socket. Uh, now this is when this guy set up his vulture LAX server. So it's pretty damn close, man. Okay. It's, 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 well, it depends upon what you're. Excuse me, here you got 0.142 and then double that. WS statistics, da da da, that looks pretty solid compared to what he was before. They fool you. They represent the ping time you get from the nearest California, sorry, Cloudflare proxy. Um, I use Kraken WebSocket updates and I measure the difference between a book entry introduction and the order open timestamp as reported by the exchange ACK message, acknowledge. Assuming my bot reaction time is negligible, it is by being less than one millisecond. From Montreal, he was having 140 milliseconds. So he's reduced it from 140 down to these numbers here. That's a big difference. So far this morning, the best RTT that I do measure from LAX was 60 milliseconds. Is much better, but I'm not yet 100% satisfied. As with the help of Kraken updates, timestamps, I know that some traders are able to get roughly 30 to 45% RTT. If there is more than one trader being doing uh, triangle arbitrage, the the fastest one reap it all. So I guess you know splitting hairs here over these milliseconds makes the big difference. Um, so for me. Uh, with the style of trading I do is totally different from this um, because again you get to remember I'm doing it in Python as well so I mean if you're doing it via uh, C++ or Java you may get some extra bit of uh, oomph to it speed wise yes it is very tough the concept is simple but there's a simple a lot of problems in the details I have been on it the last year and it starts to work I have worked out most of the pitfalls 
So he's now going to check out um, Linode and, and, and versus uh, Vulture. So I'd be curious to see where that goes. I don't really care about the customer service. I mostly care about the product. I have been impressed a lot by Vulture. Yeah, okay, that's good to know because I like Vulture myself. But as I said in my previous video with Tom, uh, Rob Braxman, he, he, he's using Linode. So um, he says, a, well, the customer service is good. And I think customer service is uh, absolute uh, over everything. In less than one hour, I was able to, I was up and running with a fresh server install and doing exactly the same environment than my dev environment. Um, yeah, I, you, you set up really fast, just uh, um, depending upon how you build it, you can uh, zip up your code, your data environment, and then just send it over via SCP. And uh, you're pretty close to, 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 to uh, implementing and, and up and running. It's, it's fast. My previous server in Montreal was CentOS 7, my web server, and it was a pain to rebuild my bot for that different environment. Exactly. That's what I was going with my web server. Because I thought I could do it on my own web server, and yet, even though they're fairly uh, supportive of what I want to do with Python, uh, there's only so far I could go, like trying to see what I could get out of them with Flask, asking about security, da 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 da. It just, there was now becoming the standard answer to, well, if you want to do third party development, we're not responsible for it. You'll have to go and find a qualified developer. So that was the, uh, the, the standard um, responses I got. So if you're using a virtual private server on a web hosting company, doing this kind of development is really not the best place to be. You want to be on these newer servers like Vulture, Linode, uh, to, to help you out with that because that's what they're built for. They're developer friendly. My previous server in Montreal was CentOS 7. Oh, um, yeah, one thing about CentOS 7 is you got to remember the next version. There is no next version. Like good old Red Hat, which is now owned by IBM, basically shafted everybody. So it's, it's better to stay with an open source um, distribution in Linux. Now, one thing I've not yet mentioned to people out in the video land is um, I was on DigitalOcean. And I set up an Ubuntu server with DigitalOcean. Everything was all good. Maybe, no, no, thank God I didn't put a lot of time into it. And I thought, well, it's a virtual machine. What happens if it gets corrupted? So I went online, looked at how to handle uh, servers in Ubuntu. If it got corrupted, what to do? What was the recommendation that um, uh, DigitalOcean would put out there? From what I read through the reviews or opinion all thanks on to Red Hat or sorry Reddit was that uh, you don't want to if you don't need to don't be on Ubuntu use Debian um, because Debian's more rock solid and the thing about Debian as I said about Red Hat CentOS all these proprietary uh, distros including Ubuntu um, they're not open source, so they're not. They're gonna. Sh they could shaft you like what Red Hat did with um, with CentOS. So um, if you can stick with Debian, I'm with uh, Ubuntu for now. Um, I don't mind, but I, I have to put this suggestion out there. Talking to somebody who's more of an architect, um, we came up with the concept of well, wouldn't it be better to build everything? All your scripts or your code or whatever in a, in a Docker container. So that is something I may do down the line because if I do it locally here, I just deploy the, the Docker container, flip the switch, and I'm done. I don't have to do all the, the crazy configuration uh, that I've been just go, been through, which is not that bad, but it still takes a couple of hours. And when you want to move it from server to server or from supplier to supplier, or provider to provider, you got to do the same process again. But when you use Docker, the container, you 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 will um, be able to uh, make life a lot easier. And the thing is, depending upon your IDE, uh, in my case, I tried out um, uh, what was the one a PyCharm in Python. I just had a, a horrible time. I don't know if it's my computer or if it's the IDE itself. I may take another stab at it on my Linux box, which has got more memory. So I may do that. Um, but for now, I'm using Sublime, and it works. Pretty nice, so happy about that. So continuing along, yeah, and as I said, it was a pain to rebuild my bot for that purpose. With Vulture Machines, I just need to upload the binary 
that I've compiled on my desktop. I think he, yeah, he's C++. And it works out of the box with the added security benefit of not having to my source code containing the secret sauce of my uh, exchange accounts keys on different machines. I never thought of that. That is a good, a really good suggestion. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> I just need to find a data center that is going to provide me a latency that is less than 10 milliseconds. Uh, you may want to try it. It sounds like you've already tried out the various ones in California. Uh, you may also get some nice latency or reduce it using, as I said before, the uh, data centers out of New Jersey. I think Madam Mad Madanawak. That is um, the town that all the HFT shops go. So if you're in New York, um, you have like large institutions or the hedge funds or whatever in, in Manhattan. Where do they have their servers reside? They were building out data centers in this town in New Jersey because they had the infrastructure, which was fairly cheap. This was highlighted in various videos 10 years ago. So this company comes along and builds out their data center in the same town. So I don't know if it's connected directly um, into it, but um, there there is that uh, uh, advantage. Also, in my case, I used to be with a company called WireTree. Uh, which was out of Chicago, and their data farm was on the other side of the wall. It was a CME. I mean, I was right in the same building with a CME if I wanted to stay with them, but pff, that was like four or five years ago, and they got um, taken over by a really bad company. Anyways, he uh, hey, I found this blog. I need to check that out. Very interesting stuff. To wrap up, is your Python algo training course going to meet my needs, learning the indicators that you have shown in your videos? Um, yes and no. Uh, uh, I might be, like, based upon community need in the forum, in the, in the, in the chat server, uh, maybe. <laughs> um, conceptually, I should say. But the course itself was already highlighted. Just, it just really introduces you to, to the, um, to the, uh, to, 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 to the TA lib. It's just giving you the infrastructure in Python. And then from there, if you're looking for the secret sauce code and the techniques, you won't find it in that course, uh, just to be upfront. Where is the product granting access to signal services? I'm still building it out, actually. Uh, if you want to talk, you know where to go. And for other people, um, yeah, all you got to do is, here's the course at quantlabs.shop. This will change. Uh, also, I have mentioned um, the um, quantlabs.net if you want to join the general form. And um, here, oh, let me just pull it up, is if you want to get more info and just talk about stuff, just go to quantlabs.net, fill out the questionnaire, and, and it will give you the email you send it to, and then we can talk. Um, in terms of where we're at with the server uh, production code, all the product, all the all the code's ready to go. It's just a matter of moving it into the server like Vulture, testing it, get it, getting it running. I have to also ensure that of the um, web connector, that web server. I've talked about it with uh, the Python side, be it um, Junicorn. I put it in that video, uh, the the forty minute video I just highlighted earlier. And there, that's where it's at. So we'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching. Have yourselves a good day. I'm hoping, thanks to this guy for documenting uh, these ping times uh, for the Kraken out of Montreal, California, uh, and some other tips. My, my little server's in Toronto, local to me, but pff, I'm going to move it to New Jersey. And I mean, if, if it, it's an advantage for me to move it to California, I'll gladly do it. Um, but I, as I said, I'm Python. He may be C++, so he's really fast. Big difference of time there. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, we'll leave it at that. And if you want to chit-chat, just get on that server, quantlabs.net slash DVD. I'm not going to be responding to WhatsApp anymore or, or Facebook Messenger or any of the social media stuff. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Have a good day.